Hi everyone, welcome, I'm glad to have you here. So as most of you that watch me know, I primarily channel, so I do pull cards because I know that you guys like to have a visual, but a lot of the time my spirit guides will just give me the information, I'll pretty much just download it, or sometimes I'll have, um, I've been having very strange dreams lately that kind of let me know what's going on as well. But like yesterday, for example, I did a gay love reading and my spirit guides basically just told me what the story was. They told me, you know, what most of the details were. And then I came on here and I channeled the rest of that message and I um, put that up yesterday. So this is another channeled message. I'm going to pull some cards. But last night I had a dream and it was very clear that it was a YouTube message because I remember that my spirit guides in the dream, they actually showed me what they wanted the title of my video to be that I saw expect communication in like bold letters. So I'm probably going to title the video that, but in my dream, you know, spirits will talk to you in strange ways. Sometimes, sometimes you get messages like through dreams or downloads, you know, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance, there's, you know, clairvoyance, you know, the four, the four clairs, there's, um, you know, there's so many different ways to get these messages. But but anyway, in, in my dream last night, it was just it's very clear. I've been having a lot of psychic dreams lately. And it was a scene from The Princess Bride, actually. So it was the scene. I don't know if all of you guys have seen this movie. I know it's a classic, but not everyone's seen it. But basically, there's it, it kind of referenced a third-party situation. Now, a third party, I'm feeling... You know, it, it could be a person. It's not it's not a person for everybody. For others, it could just be um, just some kind of outside energy that interfered with your connection. I'm getting that this reading is also going to be for those in no contact. Um, that, that was kind of obvious in the dream. So how do I even sum up the Princess Pride? Um, there's basically a prince. Uh, who is the villain in the story? There's a farm boy that was turned pirate, and he's actually the hero of the story. He's her true love in the story. And, um, you know, years have gone by, and she's being forced to marry this evil prince, and he comes back and rescues, you, rescues her, and they go through... I, I don't know how to explain this whole movie to you guys. I just want to get to the main point. Basically, at some point, um, the, the prince comes back and finds her. She's trying to escape the prince, and, you know, the prince tells tells her true love and, you know, I'm going to I'm going to capture you like you're I'm going to kill you or send you away or whatever. Um, and then at the last moment, you know, Buttercup is like, no, I'll come with you. Like, I'll go back with you. Just don't just don't hurt him. Just let him go back. Just return him to his ship. You know, um, just just let him be safe and I'll come back with you, even though she didn't really want to marry that man. And I'm going to I have a point here. OK, so my my spirit guides talk to me in these metaphors. So just bear with me for a minute. But in my dream, I saw the scene where, you know, they're back at the castle and, you know, she's telling, you know, Prince Humperdinck that, you know, she's never going to stop loving Wesley and that, you know, please just like let me be with him. Like, you know, nothing's going to change. And he says that he will send a letter. Um, he'll have his four fastest ships go out and send a letter to try to to try to find him because he's, you know, he's already left, basically. In, in her mind, from what she knows, you know, because he was meant to escape, you know, that was that was a sacrifice she made so that he could escape. Um, little does she know, though, he's actually in a torture chamber like they never he never even escaped. He ends up being in a torture chamber and coming back for her. And anyway, I don't want to get too into that. But in my dream, I saw most of you have probably seen this movie already anyway. But in my dream, um, she's confronting the prince and because he had agreed to send this these letters out to try to, you know, he was pretending like he he would be fine with them being together and she calls him out and she says you know what you never sent the letters did you like like she calls him out and she kind of just stands up to him and to me that metaphor means a couple different things for one I think that your person is is wanting you to know now some of your people are still in third-party situations some of them have already gotten out of third party situations, but you're still a little bit confused as to why that happened in the first place. So I think the metaphor here is like, I mean, because in because male or female in that movie, she did it to protect her true love, Wesley. She had no desire to marry the evil prince. She didn't want to do that. She didn't want anything to do with him. But she did it because she thought she was protecting her true love. You know, so that's one message I'm getting here is that, you're, you know, in third party situations, your person wants you to know that they never wanted the karmic. 
the karmic the karmics in these third party readings that I do are like the slit your tires type, like the straight psychos, like will block the door when your person is trying to leave type. You know, will threaten the divine feminine, threaten the divine masculine, threaten this, threaten to hurt themselves, threaten to do this and that and that, you know. And, you know, that was kind of the message I was getting from from this metaphor, from that that scene from the movie is your person letting you know, like, you know, they made a sacrifice to protect you or protect themselves, that they never wanted the karmic. There was never any love there. The karmic just threatened them into staying um, just like a little bit longer. This might have been like a very temporary thing, like they moved back in together for a couple weeks and then it was over with or... Um, they left you temporarily and came back or something of that sort. Whereas like very, very temporary, very short lived. So like I said, some of you are currently going through this energy. Like this is what you're experiencing now. This is recent for others. This is past energy, but your, your person is wanting you to know why this happened. Like they're wanting to, to kind of explain to you why that even happened because some, a lot of you con were confused. A lot of you are probably like, why would he ever want her? Why would she ever want him? Or it could be male, male, female, female, you know, take it as it resonates. And it's like, well, they didn't. They didn't. The karmic just made a, a huge threat. Um, that's, you know, and they want you to know that's why they stayed. So, and the threats aren't working anymore. You know, for those in my third party group, like, as you've seen, the threats just are not even working anymore like there's nothing like there's nothing that's worth going like the dms hate the karmics you know or or if you're a df you hate the karmic you know whatever but they're to the point where there's like there's no threat on earth like they and they also have just they're starting to use their intuition as we've talked about and they're more intelligent now and they're they're strong they're protected and they just they know they see through all the illusions like there's no more tricking them they just there's nothing on earth that would make them ever want to go back to the karmic again you know, they know the karmic is garbage. They've seen things. The truth has been revealed about the karmics, and there's just no going back from that. They would never want to touch that with a 10-foot pole again, honestly. Um, they're just at that point, you know, so they're secure. But, you know, they, they still feel guilt for, for making that decision, for being that naive, for being in that energy. And at the time, they felt like they were protecting you, but the reality is that they weren't because you were already protected, you know, like the karmic threats, like, like I, like I said in my last video, the karmics are not even able to hex anymore. They're not even able to do magic. Their powers have been stripped from them. Like the DMs and DF guides are in full force. Like they are raining down hell on earth on the karmic right now. Like, you know, you're protected. You're good. They cannot, there's no hexes that they can do anymore on you. Anything they try physically is going to get them fucked up too, honestly. But, um, but yeah, the other message I got there too was, well, there's a couple more. So one of them was just, okay, so you guys know how in that movie, like he claims that he had sent Wesley away to safety and she had made that sacrifice, but little, you know, little did she know Wesley was actually being tortured somewhere else, like underground. Um, so her sacrifice was for nothing. So that's the other message I got was the DM sacrifice was really for nothing. Or it could be like a DF. You might be a divine feminine that went back to a toxic person because of the threats he was making or the threats she was making. But um, what the story is, it's like the karmic was already doing whatever they were threatening to do anyway. You know what I mean? Like they might have said, hey, I'm going to hurt your divine feminine unless you drop her or whatever. And so the masculine, you know, he didn't give a shit about the karmic, but he just wanted to protect his divine feminine. Little did he know the karmic was still coming at his divine feminine the whole time. You know, like she would threaten and try to blackmail him and then he would agree to things, but then she would go do whatever she said she, you know, whatever she had promised not to do to the divine feminine if he just agreed with her, she would go do it anyway behind his back. Um, but it's nothing to worry about because like I said, it's like, it's to the point where like, hexes are being turned into blessings like the more i'm gonna get more into that later but it's it's there's divine intervention like i've never seen it like hexes are literally being turned into blessings like all their energy that they're they're pouring at you is is being transmuted and it's coming back on then tenfold and on top of it you're being blessed 
So the whole like self-sacrifice and trying to protect the, the divine feminine, all of that was an illusion because you know what, like the karmic was already coming at her anyway. And on top of it, the divine feminine was safe, even though she was coming at her. The divine feminine is always a million times more powerful than the karmic could ever be, you know? But, um, but yeah, a lot of, for a lot of you, it's like your person wanted to explain that. Like they wanted to basically say, Hey, like, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought this was protecting you. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I should have believed in you. I should have known that you were all already safe anyway. I should have known that you could protect yourself. I should have known that we should have been fighting through this together. We should have been fighting the karmic together. I should have been smarter. I shouldn't have believed her lies. I shouldn't let her. Bla I shouldn't have let her blackmail me and threaten me into staying. Um, so they have a lot of like regrets and guilt for that. You know, for for those in separation, it's like. They just kind of want you to know that. They want you to understand that they didn't stay out of love. They stayed because of some kind of threat that was being made. And now, but they're at the point now where they're they're free of the karmic. They're a hundred percent cut off. Like they're they've cut her off for good, or him, male or female. But they're to that point where it's like there's not a threat in the world that would make them want to ever touch her with a ten foot pole again, you know? Like, so you guys are good. The other message I was kind of getting to is like, is basically like be aware of um, manipulation from the karmic because, okay, these karmics are really fucking stupid. Like they seem to think they know they're scared. They're scared and they know that they're cut off from witchcraft. They know that there's no hexes they can do. And anyone they try to get to hex for them is going to go down too, honestly. But some of them seem to like, I don't know, I don't know why they're so stupid, but some of them really do think that if they come at you physically or they like, like they can't, I mean, they're, they like, they would literally get in car accidents before the divine would like, that's how much the divine is intervening. These karmics would literally like total their cars before they'd be able to touch, you know, lay hands on you. Like, your guides are protecting you. You're like, you're good. Use your intuition, of course. Like I said, if you feel like you need to change your locks or whatever, use your intuition. But it's like some of these, these karmas are breaking down. Like I can feel these karmics crying. They cry all the time and they cry. They don't cry because they miss the divine masculine. They cry because they miss his money. They are pissed. I'll get into that more later. I mean, that's kind of a separate energy thing, but they're pissed because they're losing that money and they're pissed because the whole community is seeing through them because they can't gaslight the divine masculine anymore. So like they they don't have that shield anymore. They used to be able to gaslight him and kind of have him do their bidding. And now that he's, you know, defending himself and defending the divine feminine and clearing and, you know, telling people like, you know what, I was wrong about the karmic. She actually is a psycho. I know what you guys were, you know, like telling his friends, like, I know what you guys were trying to say now. I get it. Like, because I think he used to stand up for her. Now he's like, no, dude, you guys are right. Like, she's a psycho. Like they like they get it now. Um these karmics are just so mad that their image, their reputation has been destroyed and their true colors are coming out and everyone's seeing it and they've lost their power and they're just, they're mad about the money. They're mad, they're mad that they lost that money. But um, well, what I was going to say is it's kind of like a warning about manipulation from the karmics because a lot of these karmics are psychopaths. Some of these karmics are not even sociopaths. A lot of these karmics, I'd say 50% sociopaths, 50% psychopaths. I have also, for my third party group, and please get, keep in mind, not all, not all karmics are bad. If I've done a reading for you and I said you're in a karmic relationship, please do not take this to mean that you're bad. This is, there, there are normal karmics and then there's the karmics that are in this specific energy group that I'm channeling here. These, these third party energy groups I've been doing the past month or so. That's a whole different group of karmics, okay? These karmics are evil. These are these are sociopaths. These are psycho psychopaths. I do not know a single human soul karmic in this third party energy group that I channel. It's all succubuses and demons and soulless beings, basically. Honestly, I'm not even exaggerating. Like these are these are dark, low vibrational beings that basically just you know, cry their little crocodile tears to get sympathy and try to drain men. You know, that's what's like, you know, succubuses, that's their thing. That's what they love to do. They love to drain men. Um, or incubuses with women, you know, or, or male, male, female, female, take it as it resonates. But anyway, 
my point is, okay, a lot of these karmics, I'm getting like a warning that some of them are going to try to gaslight you. That was the other message. I'm so sorry, guys. I plan on pulling cards, but I just, I end up channeling. So sometimes I just don't need them. You know what I mean? But this is all psychic information. This isn't just me talking. This is my spirit guides telling me like what's going on. Like they're here communicating with me. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm channeling you guys. I'm channeling like, you know, collective spirit guides here and my own spirit guides and you know, the, the energies of this group, you know, what you guys are going through. I'm channeling your stories. But anyway, the warning here is like, some of these karmics are so fucking stupid. They think that, because they know that they're cut off from magic. They know that they have a lot of spirits coming for them, a lot of strong spirits. Like, their life is about to be hell on earth, and there's nothing they can do to escape it. You know, I mean, I guess if they tried to balance their karma and they actually let go of the DF and DM, they, they might be able to escape some of it, but they've already dug themselves into quite a hole and they're digging that hole more and more every day. So, you know, it's kind of like Eight of Swords energy where they're actually doing it to themselves. They're actually making their own life hell on earth, you know, because they could stop at any time, but they'd rather just keep going and, you know, they want to fuck around and find out. The divine is going to let them fuck around and find out. You know, the divine will take it as far as these karmics want to take it. If they want to lose houses, cars, jobs, whatever else, the car the divine will do it. You know what I mean? The karmics are going to decide how far they want to take this. But anyway, what I was going to say, so there's a warning for some of you that the karmic might try to gaslight you. Because that was another another message, another metaphor I got. And you guys need to be smarter than that. Like when the karmic I'm dealing with, because I'm in this part energy group with you guys. And like the karmic I deal with is a complete fucking clown. Like I don't even, I don't even bother answering the phone if she tries to call. <laughs> I mean, if I get like a call from a restricted number, I just, I don't bother. Because I like, I know that she's, I know how dark and manipulative she is. I know that she likes to lie. I know she likes to try to gaslight people. And I just, I like, she's already, I don't know, like she's already lost. And many of your karmics, it's like, I mean, many of you in this situation, it's like the karmic lost a long time ago. Like the DM never loved the karmic for the most part, or maybe he did like years ago, but you know, it's, it's, it was never even really a battle. It's like, and these karmics are too delusional to see that, you know, like if you have to threaten someone into staying with you, if you have to block the door, slit their tires, threaten to come after their true love, whatever, it's like, they don't love you. Duh. Obviously, if you have to do all that, why the... The Divine Feminine would never bother with all that. I mean, the Divine Feminine would never make those threats to someone. She's above that, you know, but the karmics don't get that. They think that that's what love is or not, not even love. They just want the money. They want the power. But, but a lot of them, it's like, they're the type to like block the door, like slit the tires, like try to, you know, stalk, like stalk people, you know, that kind of shit. They're just, they're crazy. They're absolutely nuts. And they're, they're delusional. They don't realize that it's not even a battle. There's just, there's, there's no love. The DM has no love at all for them. He's, he wants nothing to do with the karmic, you know, um, or female. Some of you are female, you know, some of you are, your masculines are karmics for some of, I mean, for some divine feminines, if you were in like an abusive relationship with the man that was beating you, because I know I have some people here that are dealing with male stalkers that were physically abusive with them. So it could be male or female karmic. But anyway, I'm sorry. So my point was, there was also, I'm feeling a warning. I'm feeling a positive communication too. Like for those of you in separation, I do feel like, like, um, you're going to get a message somewhere or someone's caving and messaging you. I'm getting two messages. So you're getting a message from your true love because your person misses you. You know, a lot of you, it's like your person has caved and they're just, they're messaging you or you're about to message them, but there's, there's some kind of message coming in. I'm also getting, though, that um, for those in separation, there's also, what else was the message from that dream? I'm sorry. Sometimes when I channel, I get all over the place. The other message I was going to say, oh, yeah, so about the gas sighting. Okay, so that metaphor, think about that metaphor from that scene. I hope most of you have seen the movie because otherwise it's not going to make sense. Maybe like The Princess Bride is like your person's movie. Like you and your person just watch that movie together or it's your movie. I don't know. But um, the gaslighting thing. So it kind of reminded me of how like in that scene, Humperdinck was telling Buttercup like, you know, like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to send I'm going to send the letters out. So your true love can come have you if he wants. I'm not, you know, 
I'm not trying to kidnap you. I'm not trying to hold you prisoner here. You're free to go. But then when she confronts him, it's like the truth comes out that he never sent the letters. So I think I think some of you are going to get messages from the karmics where so this is for those of you that still have your person living with the karmic. Um, so those of you that are still dealing with like your, your person's living with the karmic still and, you know, they're um, like you're kind of confused about what's going on. I feel like, yeah, I feel like you're about to get a message from your person. So check, check your messages. I feel like, where would this be? I'm trying to see if I can get any insight into this. Like it could be anywhere. It could be emails. It could be phone calls, whatever. But I'm just getting like, keep yourself open for messages. And then I'm also getting though that the karmic is going to want to gaslight you and she's going to want to communicate with you. And this reading might be in two parts, so check back for part two if it splits up. But but basically the, the energy I was getting is like, okay, so she might try to gaslight you. She might try to, um, so in that scene, you know, where Humperdinck was basically like telling her like, oh, she's free at any time. I feel like the karmics might call you or they might try to communicate with you. And they might try saying like, like, oh, he's free to go. Like, I'm not, I'm not holding him back. Like, you know, he just, he chose me. He just loves me. And they... God, they have to know that's not true. Who could be that delusional? But for those of you that your person is still living with the karmic, yeah, that you might get that phone call where the karmic tries to say, like, you know, you, you know, he's free to go when he timed you. I told him, you know, like, I just, I just want him to be happy. I just want the, you know, I just want the truth. I wouldn't put myself through all that. Like, you know, he's totally. If, if you guys want to be together, go ahead and be together. And then, you know, behind the scenes, she's basically threatening him and trying to barricade the doors or threaten to slit his tires or threatening to hurt herself or threatening to hurt the divine feminine or whatever else into keeping him, you know, staying. And she's doing that to to gaslight you guys. So for those of you that get that call, you're going to be like, OK, well, so she's telling me that he's free to go. But like, why is he not, why is he still there? Like, why is he acting so scared? Why is he acting so weird? It's like, well, he's being threatened. And this is an abusive relationship. Like, so I just want to say, don't let the karmic gaslight you if you get those phone calls where she's trying to pretend like he's free. Because it's like, if he were free, he would, you know. And this is for those that are in still, you know, your person's still living with her. You know, for this energy group, like, you're, you know, I believe your person is going to move out. Like, that's how the, this energy group is progressing. For some, it's just taking longer than others. But ultimately, in this energy group, from what I've seen, is the masculine standing up for themselves and realizing that the divine feminine is safe, that, you know, she was never in danger, that danger, those threats. It's all just an illusion coming from a scared, pathetic little girl that's throwing a bratty little temper tantrum because, you know, she's not getting her way anymore. She's not able to seduce men anymore. She's not able to hex anymore. She's not able to use black magic to get what she wants anymore. So she's desperate and she's upset. So, you know, just keep that in mind if, if you get a phone call and she tries to gaslight you and she tries to say like, oh, he's free to go or, or, or you know, like tries to like she's trying to pretend like he loves her it's like they're so delusional that the masculine could straight up tell the karmic like fuck you i never want to see you again spit in her face and she'll still pretend like he loves her she'll pretend like she's that psychotic and delusional where he can tell her he hates her he can tell her he doesn't want a thing to do with her and she'll still tell herself and try to tell the people around her that they just got in a bad fight oh he doesn't mean it you know, oh, he said he was going to go off and marry the Divine Feminine. But I, th I think he was just, I think he's just talking. Like, they're that delusional. It's it's a scary level of delusion. Like, this is someone that's completely out of touch with reality. This is a straight psychopath right here. Okay? But it's just saying, please do not allow yourselves to be manipulated and gaslit by the karmic. Because I do feel like you're about to get a message from your Divine Masculine or your Divine Feminine. Like, that message is coming in. Um, they're, they're finding a way to communicate with you. For some, it's like if they can't find you on like, like let's say they're having a hard time finally finding you on social media or um, 
like email or whatever, like some of them are going to show up like at your door, you know, some of them they're because I'm just getting like a, like an energy of them trying to like figure out the best way to communicate with you. But a lot of you have, you know, you're getting this message now. Um, you know, that, that was just coming through so strongly in the dream is expect communi communication. But, um, but yeah, a lot of you are going to get the message from the karmic at the same time where she's like, oh, he's free to move out. Like, I'm not keeping him stuck or anything. And it's like, no, that's not true. This is an abusive connection where he's, he or she is basically being bullied. Um, but like I said, for this energy group, like the energy is moving along smoothly. So you don't have too much to worry about. Um, you know, eventually, sooner or later, like for those of you that are still dealing with that, it's like sooner or later, your person is going to, you know, from what, what I've, how I've seen this progress is he or she will stand up to this karmic and they re will realize that, you know, you're protected, you're safe. The karmic actually has no power. And once they realize that there's no turning back, there's no, you know what I mean? There's nothing that the karmic can do to bring that illusion back. It's too late. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys that message that you that you might I, I'm getting, you know, as I channeled, I was getting, OK, you're getting two messages. You're probably a lot of you are probably getting a message from your true love now, but I'm getting that you're also getting a message. And this is just the energy. It doesn't mean for sure you're getting this message. But for for a lot of you, I feel that energy like you most likely are that that's that's the energy. That's what this person's wanting to do. Um, someone's caving. Someone's like someone your true love is just like I cannot be away from you another minute. Um, so, so yeah, I'm getting that energy that, that you're getting a message, but you're also going to get like a call or some kind of message or something from the karmic trying to gaslight you because for a lot of you, so this for like those of you still like, you know, your person's living with the karmic, it's like, I kind of feel like, I just feel like the energy of like this karmic knows that she's lost. Like he, he or she has to know, you know, and this is for those of you that are still dealing with your person, like living in this situation. For those of you that, you know, your person's already moved out, like you're even further along than this. You know what I mean? Like you're even doing better off than this group is, you know, because it's all the same energy group, but there's just different. Like some of you guys are still in this energy. Not everyone's caught up to the energy of, you know, your person living on their own and whatnot. But, um. But yeah, it's just like this delusional energy where it's like, I feel like maybe your person told the karmic that they're choosing you, like they made that very clear. And again, like, I just want to say like the masculine and the divine feminine, like, you know, male or female, like your true love could tell the karmic, like, I hate you. You disgust me. You're hideous. You're not my body type at all. Like, you know just they could they could tear them down and the karmic is just too delusional to to accept that the masculine just does not want her that he does not love her that he never really loved her that was never really his person male or female so i just want to keep put that put that out there because some of them are just so delusional though that they're going to keep holding on anyway so some of you are going to get that call from your person like that message that um you know, communication from your true love. Someone's just bursting. Someone's just like, can't be away from you any longer is the energy that I get here. And so you're, you're basically what I'm feeling is, you know, the karmic's going to try to come back around at you the same time that your masculine or your divine feminine does. You know, this is coming in now, you know, a lot of you, you know, have received this message already. Some of you have received this message in, um, you know, messenger, email, Instagram, uh, you know, phone calls, whatever it might be. But it's just basically saying like, you know, the karmic will lie. The karmic doesn't care. The karmic will gaslight you. The karmic will lie if you allow her to, you know what I mean? Like she'll, she'll tell you like, oh, the masculine totally chose me. Like he loves me. Like she's just that delusional. She'll, t she'll tell you he cheated. She'll tell you he, um, you know, like I was saying that in that metaphor I got from the Princess Bride where, where she'll say, oh, he's totally free to go. But little do you know, you know, she's actually trying to block the door whenever your person tries to leave or she threatens him or, or tries to slit the tires or does something psychotic. So it's like, you know, the karmic's calling you, telling you, oh, he's totally free to go. And then, you know, 
he's like, what the, what? Like, no, I'm not. Like, you're not letting me go. I'm trying to go, you know? Like, he's like probably there, like being forced to listen to her call you. And he's like, dude, what the fuck do you mean? I'm free to go. Like, you're letting me go now? I'm finally free? And she's like, oh, no, you're not. I just, I just, you know, wanted to try to hit him like the divine feminine. But divine feminines, you have to be smarter. You have to use your intuition because like, you know, like your person would not touch these karmics with a 10 foot bowl. And the karmics know it too. The karmics know that the divine masculine finds them absolutely disgusting. Or divine feminine. You could be a divine feminine dealing with a, with an abusive karmic. Either way. Um, you know, they... They... I think they... I Like, no one could be that delusional. I feel like they would have to realize that the masculine finds them disgusting. I mean, like I said, a lot of the masculines have told them that. Like, they've, they've, some of them have already let them know. Like, they're sick of them. They just want out. You know, they're just done with them. Um, but again, like, I'm just letting you guys know there's no reasoning with the karmic. Like, she'll lie. She doesn't give a shit. She'll lie to you. She'll, you know, like, she'll pretend she doesn't, they don't care. These karmics are psychopaths. They do not give a shit. They'll lie about whatever they need to lie about. So you need to be intuitive and you need to be intelligent um, when these messages come in. And I recommend just not even answering the phone. Like, you know, just laugh at them. They're just, oh my gosh, they're just ridiculous. I think I'm going to, I'm going to stop this video. I think I'm going to do a second video to, um, I think I'm going to do a second video to look into like the love portion of the story. Because I know not all of you are in this third party group and some of you are some of you guys are getting communication anyway but you're just not in a third party group or whatever so I'm going to do like I'm going to do a second video to look more into like the love energy of the story okay